Good night, America. Welcome to the Richard Fowler Show. As always, here on the Richard Fowler Show, we're here to inform you, empower you, and help you get your voice back. Tonight's show, no different. All your favorite segments, the reality check, can we all just get along, news by the numbers, and oh, so much more. It's also the Fowler Show's birthday. Yes, indeed, my little daughter is turning six, and we're so proud of her. She's growing. She's lost an hour, but what she's lost in an hour, she's gained in momentum. Yes, indeed, America, it's true, and there's so much news in this hour to cover, so let's get right to it. Former White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon is out at the far-right Breitbart News. This news comes shortly after Bannon's feud with President Trump last week based off the damning quotes he gave and he provided to Michael Wolff's new book, Fire and Fury. And yes, indeed, America, fire and fury it is for Steve Bannon as he flames out from hell. I mean, America, talk about a flame out. Talk about a fall from grace. Talk about the pride that came before the fall. Like, I mean, all right, so the, the good book talks about pride come before the fall. I mean, Steve Bannon's pride before the fall, I would argue, would be this Roy Moore thing. Remember, he went out, he gave that big speech in Alabama about how Roy Moore was the guy. That was the pride. And now this is the fall. This is like the Bible in true and real living color. Okay? But let's get to it. So what Republicans are going to try to do here, right, before, before I get to that, let's talk about the facts, because <laughs> this is such a juicy, it's a tantalizing story. So let's talk about the facts. So, Michael Wolff uh, is a famous USA Today columnist, right? He was given unfed, he was given basically walk-in access to the White House for the first five months of the Trump presidency. And we learned this from a Gorka, who used to be an, also a Trump advisor, from a statement that he made sort of condemning Wolf. But in the statement condemning Wolf, he talked about how Wolf would hang out. He talked about how Wolf hanged out, hung out, excuse me, in Reigns Priebus's office. And basically all the senior staff was sort of forced to meet with this guy. Steve Bannon met with him. And Steve Bannon gave some, quite some racy quotes, including calling Ivanka, I'm paraphrasing, calling Ivanka sort of stupid, calling what Don Jr. did with the president, what Don Jr. did in that white, in that Trump White House meeting, I mean, excuse me, in the Russia Trump campaign meeting, treasonist, on and on and on and on and on. Now this book is out to the presses. I mean, mind you, this book is a hot commodity. It's so fire and fury that at Amazon alone, there is a two-month waiting list to get this book. Two-month waiting list to get this book. So that's where we are. And so then I present to you a quote. So after the backlash from all of the Steve Bannon quotes, Steve Bannon got a little bit, he got some cold feet, and he decided to walk back what he said about Don Jr. And the quote that he released after all the damning quotes he made in his Fire and Fury book was the following. Donald Trump Jr. is both a patriot and a good man. I regret that my delay in responding to the inaccurate reporting regarding Don Jr. has diverted attention from the president's historic accomplishments in the first year of the Trump presidency. Now, Steve Bannon called Don Jr. treasonous and unpatriotic. Um, the White House then, I mean, and then after that, it was just a trifecta. It was like a four-day fall. It happened so fast. He lost all of his major donors. The Mercer family basically said, we're out, Steve. We're closing up shop on you. Then Breitbart fired him. It was bad. And then what the White House tried to do, which was sort of cute, was they tried to divorce themselves from Steve Bannon like he never existed in their world. Like, oh no, we don't know Steve Bannon. We don't know him. He never worked here. And that is, for me, the tantalizing part. Because they must feel as though Beyond the 33% of Americans that, are, well, they, that if Trump told them to jump in a fire, they would jump in the fire. But the rest of us, the 66% of Americans, the 666666 repeating, who are like, no, 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 we have common sense. We all know who Steve Bannon is and how pivotal he was in the Trump White House. Let's think about some of Steve Bannon's greatest hits. I wrote them down for you. So first we have the Muslim travel ban was a Steve Bannon greatest hit, where he decided, let's get all the countries where Muslims live, and let's just ban them from coming to the United States. Steve Bannon greatest hit number one. Then his second greatest hit, how could we all forget the time where Donald Trump tried to put him on the National Security Council? 
even though he has no national security experience. So they took off the joint, the, 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 the guy who runs the Joint Chiefs of Staff, right? They took him off. And in exchange for him, they put Steve Bannon on. Then, let's not forget the fact that Donald Trump is even in the White House has everything to do with Steve Bannon. Then, you have Charlottesville. I'm not blaming Steve Bannon for Charlottesville, but I am blaming him for this statement. Remember the, there's violence on many sides? Oh yeah, a Steve Bannon original. Oh, and then let's not forget our good friend Roy Moore. The good old racist, xenophobic, xenophobic homophobic, misogynistic pedophile who ran for Senate from the state of Alabama, who had 100% backing from our good friend Steve Bannon. So much so that even the president endorsed Roy Moore because of Steve Bannon. America, Steve Bannon's greatest hits. And the hits keep coming because what will now happen to Steve Bannon now that he's lost Breitbart, now that he's lost the president's ear, now that he's, he went from being the great Steve Bannon, such a great man, to being sloppy Steve. What will happen to him, America? I, to be frank with you, I don't think Steve Bannon's going anywhere. I think Steve Bannon will stick around and continue causing havoc in the Republican Party. Because here's the thing, he talks to a group of people that want to continue listening to Steve Bannon. Remember, Roy Moore still won the Alabama Senate race. I mean, he still lost, but he lost by 40. He still won 48% of the vote. And so Steve Bannon's not quite done yet. So while Republicans want to write him off and they want to write his death certificate, us here at the Fowler Show, we believe in the Steve Bannon reincarnation. And let me tell you, it's coming sooner than you think. There's a midterm election just around the corner. And with all these Republican retirements happening in the United States House and the U.S. Senate, Steve Bannon will be busy toiling his web of wonders for us all to see and causing the Republican Party a headache so large and so painful that not even a Title III will be able to cure the pain. Here's the thing about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the gift that keeps on giving. Because now that he's created Steve Bannon and given Steve Bannon such a big platform, not even Donald Trump will be able to get rid of this tattoo on the biker's ass. And that this time, America, the tattoo's on Donald Trump's ass. And he won't be able to get rid of it. And it's, and it's, and it's big. It's a big tattoo. And it just says Steve Bannon. And it's not going anywhere. I mean, it's, it's funny. But it's true, but I mean, I, I gotta tell you, I just love it when they try to act like he never worked for them. And this is a trend with this White House. Remember Mike Flynn? When they fired Mike Flynn, they're like, oh, he never worked here, we don't know him. And you're like, what do you mean you didn't know him? He was your national security advisor. He introduced you at rallies. There's tapes of him introducing you at rallies. Like, oh no, we don't know him. Remember Mike Papadopoulos? or excuse me, whatever, his George Papadopoulos. They're like, oh, we don't know him. He was just a campaign volunteer. But then there's pictures of him in meetings with the attorney general and the president. They're like, oh, no, we didn't know him. Every time one of their individuals get caught in hot water, this White House plays a game of, where's Waldo? Like, we don't know who that is. We didn't know him. We've never seen him before. But we have tapes. And what you can't do is separate yourself from Steve Bannon. Because everybody in America knows the role that Steve Bannon played in the first year of this White House. He sat in the front row of almost every press conference. He traveled with the president on almost every major trip. He advised the president on tons of policies. And then when he left the White House, he basically said, I'm going out to fight back against the swamp. I'm going out to fight back against Mitch McConnell. I'm going out to fight the president's war. But the president doesn't know him all of a sudden? Mm. Sorry, Mr. President, it doesn't work that way. We're watching, and we know that you know Steve Bannon.